out today. Uh, it's a very, very special day for Maryland basketball in an arena that has seen tre tremendous basketball games over the past couple of decades. I think we all remember the sellout crowds we've had at Big Ten Conference games and some of the rivalries that Maryland's had in basketball. And as I was thinking back over 41 years of doing these games, we've had a lot of exciting things happen with this basketball program. But today may be one of the toppers of all outside of winning the national championships. Uh, we've had some fabulous finishes here. Remember the game-winning shots? The final second shots by Gravis Vasquez, Alyssa Thomas, and Melo Trimble right here on this floor. And for Coach Friedgen, and for Coach Friedgen, for Coach Turgeon, and for he was here last week, for Coach Turgeon and for Coach Freeze, an opportunity to get something that I'm sure that they have longed for for a long, long time, a very, very special building, which we are going to be building and in the process of raising funds for right now. Both men's and women's basketball teams here at Maryland are ranked in the nation in the top 15, most of them in the top 10 in the country. It'll probably be one of the more exciting seasons we have ever seen in Maryland basketball. Sellout crowds, tickets are extremely hard to get, but there are still some available, and uh, it's going to be a very, very special year for all of us involved in this program. At this time, I'd like to have you meet uh, Maryland's athletic director, a gentleman who spreads himself thin. Every time there's an event, he's going to be there. Sometimes there are two or three events in one day, he's going to be there, and he'll tell you more about this very special get-together today. Would you welcome Athletic Director Damon Evans. Damon? Johnny, I, I do appreciate the introduction, and I appreciate it because it was very, very brief. That means you didn't tell any lies about me today. But it is really an honor to be here with everyone, and I simply want to thank you, Johnny, for all the things that you do in being the voice of the Terps and what you mean. I affectionately call you the living legend because it is so true, and we are so humbled and honored to have you here with us today for this announcement. As you just stated, Maryland basketball has a storied history, and today we are proud to add to that rich tradition. Maryland Athletics is proud to launch a comprehensive fundraising campaign for a new basketball performance center. This new performance center will be the home of our men's and women's basketball programs and will usher in a new era of success for basketball. It will be a symbol of excellence, not only for our fans, but our coaches, our student athletes, in this great institution. This is a $36 million project that will be funded by the generous support of our donors and our friends. We have already raised to date $19 million, a testament to our development staff and our passionate fan base. Today marks the official launch of the public phase of this campaign. We still need to raise a remaining $17 million to make this project a reality. This center in and of itself will be 60,000 square feet featuring two full-size basketball courts, a shared strength and conditioning facility, new locker rooms, lounges, sports medicine, and so forth. It will be one of the premier facilities in the country. Sitting next to me are two of the best coaches and recruiters in the country. So just think what they will be able to do with this facility. But I should share with you that the impact of this facility goes well beyond basketball. The construction of the new center will allow for upgraded locker rooms and sports medicine, sports medicine facilities for some of our Olympic sports. It will also finally allow us to start hosting more events in Xfinity, such as shows and concerts. I would be remiss today if I did not single out a key individual behind the success of our fundraising today. Harvey Sanders, a longtime supporter of Maryland basketball has been a force 
behind this effort. We would not be here up on this stage today without his drive and passion. I would also like to thank Jackie Lewis, the university's vice president of university relations, as well as the Maryland College Park Foundation's Board of Trustees for their unwavering support. The new basketball performance center delivers on the vision that we set forth for our program. We will lead boldly. We will provide a student-centered environment, and we will provide or inspire Maryland pride. This center delivers on all three parts of that promise. This is a facility our student athletes, our coaches, our programs in this great university will be extremely proud of. I simply say to you, let's go out and get the remaining dollars and make this project a reality and something that will be extremely special when we look back. Thank you for coming out today and go Terps. We know you'd like to hear some comments from the coaches today as well. A couple of things about Maryland basketball. The men's team beginning its 101st season. They went 23 and 11 last year, 13 and 7 in the conference and got to the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament. 180 wins over the past eight seasons for men's basketball. Maryland went to the NCAA appearance in four of the last five seasons. Our head coaches led the Terps to four top five finishes in Big Ten competition, compiled a 59 and 33 record in conference play. At home, 35 and nine in conference play, including a perfect nine and 0 mark in the first year in the Big Ten. 2015 Big Ten Coach of the Year. He's had three players selected in the NBA draft over the past two years, among them Kevin Herter and Bruno Fernando. And the team is selected to be in the preseason top 10 by never every, almost every national poll. In fact, they're ranked as high as five in one particular preseason poll. Seven of the eight rotation players are back this year, including two-time All Big Ten Conference selection, Anthony Cowan Jr. It's a young team, an exciting team, 80% of the scoring returns from last season. May you welcome, please, head coach Mark Turgeon. Yes! <laughs> I am so excited. You have no idea. What a great day for men's and women's basketball, uh, our athletic department, uh, for our university. Uh, it's just a, an amazing day. Uh, there was many days I wasn't sure we were going to get to this point. And um, an amazing day for our student athletes, just the opportunity it's going to give them. Um, I have a really hardworking group. We have a great culture uh, with our basketball program. And sometimes there's just nowhere for us to use that culture. Uh, and now we have no excuses uh, with this building. So it's a tremendous day. Uh, there's so many people I want to thank. Obviously, I want to thank Damon. Um, this has been a vision of mine for quite some time. Um, it's been a passion of mine for quite some time. And we had to build the football facility, and it's a terrific thing. So we had to, we had to, I had to be patient, which I'm not very good at, to be quite honest with you. And finally, the time came where we were able to get out and do some things and, and raise some money. Um, Damon thanked him. I call him Coach Harvey. Harvey's my man. Um, Harvey Sanders, he was a guy that was very generous and very relentless in his approach uh, to getting this building built. Uh, there was many days I gave up on the building. Even a year ago, I looked at Damon, I said, Damon, quit talking to me about the practice facility. It's not going to happen. But Harvey wouldn't let us give up. And uh, we've gone out and we've raised a ton of money. And there's some guys in this building today that helped, and I thank you for that. And it's a great day for all of us. Um, it's been a lot of hard work to get to this point. It just, we just, stage wasn't put up yesterday. Uh, we've been working on it for a long time and um, create a lot of great friendships trying to get this done. And um, I'm really proud of where we are to this point and we still have some work to do. Um, so Damon, I thank you, obviously Harvey, um, 
Josh Kaplan, a guy in, in the building I think is very important to me. He's my MVP right now uh, because he's doing a lot of things uh, up on campus. Uh, we thank the foundation, Jackie Lewis, Jeff Ganella, that group. Uh, they were terrific in helping us. Uh, 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 Board of Trustees, everybody that's involved uh, in something like this, I thank you. I, I, do think the uni I do think the people on campus are super excited about this building. I can tell by the way their, their energy that they're putting towards this. They know the coach has no patience. The coach wants this building built quickly, and there's a lot of people turning over a lot of stones to, to make this happen. So I thank everybody out there. Uh, if you're not here, if you hear this, thank you for doing that. Um, helps me sleep at night, and I don't yell at Damon quite as much about things. So I uh, appreciate it. Um, this building is not about keeping up with the Joneses, okay? And that's, it's an arms race in, in, in college athletics, but this building is needed, okay? Damon talked about how we can have concerts in this building and make money for our athletic program, which we need, okay? But we can, we need it. And let me tell you one story, and I'm not going to tell a lot of stories, but, and I'll just tell you one instance of why we need this building so badly. Last year, during finals, we... This building is for graduation. Our other building is for dress rehearsal for graduation. We have nowhere to practice, okay? We have a small window of when we can practice because we are student athletes, right? Well, we were supposed to practice in one building, but it was raining and there was a roof leak, so we couldn't practice in that building. So we tried to get into another one that day. We couldn't practice. The next day we were able to get into it, but while we were doing that, it's 48 degrees and raining out, and we're running in our practice uniforms, and our managers are carrying things from this building to that building so we can have a practice. And we're Maryland basketball. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. So a couple years, hopefully, we're not doing that. Uh, people on campus have been great. But you think about those days of practice, too, you don't have extra time to get free throws in. The building was throwing us out. We had an hour for practice in that building, and they were throwing us out because they were closing down because of finals. So we had one hour, and we were preparing for a pretty big college basketball game last year over Christmas, all right? So this building is going to allow those days to go away. So it's a needed building, and that's what I want to get at. We're going to build an unbelievably beautiful building. Uh, I think we've designed it 16 different times already, um, and... We have a lot of work to do out there still, and Damon said it, and I'm all in on this baby. We're going to get it raised. It's going to be, campus is going to be proud of it. We're going to raise every dollar. We're not going to have to borrow any money from anybody. We're going to get it done because we're Maryland basketball. Thank you. The Maryland women's basketball program took a giant step forward back about uh, 17 years ago, when Brenda Fries came to the University of Maryland, beginning her 18th season, and what an incredible job she has done for the program nationally, conference-wise, led the Terps to three Final Fours, eight Sweet Sixteens, and 10 conference titles. Five of her players currently playing in the WNBA Finals tonight, more than any other program. Preseason rankings as high as number five, according to the NCAA, they return all five starters from last year's Big Ten championship team. Four of those five, all Big Ten honorees, including the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Taylor Mikesell. And they bring the number three freshman class made up of four outstanding players. And like Coach Turgeon, she cannot wait to get started with her basketball program. Would you welcome Head Coach Brenda Freeze? Thank you very much. Like it's been echoed, it is a great day to be a Terp. Obviously, this practice facility uh, for both Coach Turgeon and I, uh, for our entire athletic department, is a game changer. And, you know, I think we've already uh, been able to show, we've been able to, with both programs, be able to see, we've been able to attract the, the best players in the country year in and year out. So now to be able to layer that uh, with one of the best facilities, practice facilities, we already play in, one of, in the best facility in the country, and now to have a practice facility to be able to match it, a uh, very, very exciting day. You know, like it was spoken to, you know, our, our players have big dreams, big goals, 
you know, the fact that we have five uh, former Terps playing in the WNBA championship currently, uh, you see the dreams that they have uh, wanting to play at the next level. And the fact that now they will have 24-hour access to be able to get in at any time. Uh, we won't have to juggle practice time, so we're, we're able to get extra free throws in uh, whenever they want uh, to be able to have that time. I know for Coach Turgeon and I, uh, again, is a, is a big-time um, element that I think we'll be able to, sell, to be able to separate both of our programs uh, to even a higher level. You know, I want to thank uh, Damon for his leadership, his support, and his vision. Uh, he said uh, from day one we were going to get this built, and I love the fact that um, he continues what he puts out there. Uh, he continues to, to layer with all of the support that all of us have uh, as coaches in the athletic department. Um, obviously, all the donors that have already supported uh, the initiative uh, to be able to get the, the money where it's at, and then obviously we're looking forward to uh, those new donors that, that want to come out and, and contribute uh, to, to really uh, finish this thing off. So um, again, uh, you know, just appreciate all of your guys' support, and go Terps! All right, now we're going to open it up for um, questions. Um, we have a mic here. Uh, please identify yourself and who you want to ask the question to. Uh, I'm Emily Jimbabwe. I work for the Washington Post. Damon, did, was there an expected completion date? Uh, obviously, we'd like to get it done as soon as possible, but as I mentioned, we still uh, need have some remaining dollars to raise, the $17 million to raise. A project of this uh, magnitude from nuts to bolts, including designing, permitting, is usually about 36-month project. We've been fortunate enough to start some of the efforts already, but again, we're going to stay focused on the fundraising aspect of it and continue to move forward. Currently in progress. I mean, what what gave you the confidence to take this on simultaneously? Well, I believe as an athletic department that we got to continue to push and move forward and grow. Our basketball programs are important to us. The history and tradition that we have. I believe that we have the fan base and the support out there to do so. Uh, the 19 million dollars that we fundraised to date is a testament to that. So I've every bit of confidence that we'll be able to raise the money uh, to complete this project. Mark, I, I was told that Maryland, right now, Maryland and Boston College are the only Power Five schools without a practice facility. Is that, is that correct? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. I, I, I thought we were the only one, but I don't know about Boston College. How, I mean, you've recruited really well. Um, what, what does this change? Is it more the is it more the preparation for games as opposed to the recruiting for you? Well, I, I think with the building, it, it shows progress. It shows that we're not happy with everything. We're, we're, we're trying to set a standard of excellence uh, by building this building. Um, and I think that's huge for us. In my recruiting, they're going to Villanova and Virginia and Georgetown. They all have tremendous facilities, okay? So that'll make it at least even for us, okay? She said it best, we're able to recruit because Lefty Drizel, Gary Williams, Tradition, we're able to do some great things recruiting-wise because of this building. But it all comes down to preparation, right? Summer's a mess here. I don't even want to get into it, right? So I told you one story. We fight that all the time. Those are gone. We need to make more money in our athletic department. We build this facility. We can have concerts in here, and it doesn't affect Brenda and I one bit because we have a place to go. So. I think it's a win for everybody, but it's just not about recruiting in that building. It's about everything involved in building this building. Lila Bromberg, the Pseudo Times. Where are you guys planning on, you know, having the facility on campus? The question is, are we planning to have it on campus? Yeah, Absolutely. Like on campus? Yeah, right here on campus. We'd like to have this building attached right outside in lot UU uh, to this facility in and of itself to make it very convenient for both of our programs. Just to get, just so you know, because I'm excited, there'll be a little tunnel right <laughs> Too excited. <laughs> there'll be a little tunnel, I'm not in charge of the mic, right outside this little entryway right here, and the building will be just on the outside of that wall right there. 
It's going to be a beautiful building.